Let's take a look at custom trunk placers. All right, we found us back in Intelligent once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom trunk placers to Minecraft or specifically one custom trunk placer. Now, one very important thing here at the very beginning is, of course, that you will need to have gone through probably all the origin tutorial as well as the tree custom tree as well as the custom tree generation tutorial. This is pretty much going to be needed as we are going to need the configured feature over here, both the one for the tree as well as, of course, all of the rest. So it actually will spawn in the world with the mod place features. So I do highly recommend if you have not done that to go through or if you know how that works, then that's also fine. But the idea is that a custom trunk placer is now needed. And let's take a look how that works. The first step of this is actually to make a mixin because in this case, we need a mixin to actually register our custom trunk placer. Now, luckily, the mixin itself is very straightforward. So in our mixin package, we want to create the trunk placer type invoker class over here, which should be an interface and then just hit enter. And inside of it is actually fairly straightforward. Above it, we want to call the add mixin over here and add the trunk placer type dot class. Then inside of it, we just want to have a static and then a angle bracket P extends trunk placer here in this case, and then a trunk placer type of type P call register with a string ID and a codec of type P here called codec. We can import this. This is going to be from com mojang serialization. And then inside of it, we just want to throw a new illegal state exception. And above the method over here, we want to call invoker. And this is going to be the register method over here. Basically, this is just going to invoke the register method from the trunk placer type. And as we have seen previously, when we have a mixin, we want to copy the name, go to our tutorial mod mixin class, and inside of the mixins right here, we want to add exactly that name. Make sure that the name right here is exactly the name right here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And once we've done this, we can now go on to our world package. Inside of the tree package, we're going to make, first of all, another package called custom. And then inside of the tree package, we're going to make the mod trunk placer types. There you go. And then in the custom package, we're going to make the chestnut trunk placer. There we go. And we're actually going to start with this one because this will extend the trunk placer class over here. Let's hover over this, implement the two methods in this case, hover over this again, create constructor matching super. And then we need a, another thing It's going to be the codec. So this is going to be a public static final codec of type chestnut trunk placer. I'm going to call this the codec equal to the record codec builder dot create. We're going to start writing instance and you can see it suggests us to update object instance over here. We're then going to call the fill trunk placer fields method, passing in the object instance after the first closing parentheses dot apply, passing in the instance again, and then chestnut trunk placer colon colon new, ending it with a semicolon. We can then just import the codec class again, and there you go, no more errors should be present. And as always, of course, all of the code is available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. Now with this done, we can make a deliberate error right here in the type and then in the generate method. Well, that is the method that we're going to take a look at in just a second, where we're actually going to be placing down the logs for our custom trunk. But first of all, we want to register this inside of the mod trunk placer types. And here is this as easy as saying public static final trunk placer type of type question mark. This is going to be the chestnut underscore trunk underscore placer. And this is going to be equal to a trunk placer type invoker dot call register. The name over here is going to be the chestnut underscore trunk underscore placer. And then the chestnut trunk placer dot codec here. And there you go. That's going to be it. And then here we're also going to make a public static void register method just so that we have this and this is going to call tutorial mod .logger info and then just saying registering trunk placers or tutorial mod .mod ID. this is once again not strictly necessary however it does make sense to add this and then we can call it right here it's going to be the mod trunk placers placer types dot register there you go and we can then proceed once again in the chestnut trunk placer returning the type mod trunk placer types dot chestnut trunk placer and all of a sudden we are good to go and we can continue with the generate method. 
Now, when it comes to the generate method, this is going to be hopefully easy to like understand the general idea and then very hard to master. However, the one thing that you can take a look at is you can click on the trunk placers, press control H and take a look at the vanilla trunk placers over here. This is probably one of the best things to take a look at. So for example, you're like, oh, how does the forking trunk placer work? Well, look at the generate method and this is it. Now, if you're like, this is insanity, it's like, well, you're not quite wrong, but at the same time, this is pretty much just some Java stuff. Although this one really is a lot like very hard to read, right? So you might want to take a look at the cherry one or something like that. But in general, you can take a look at the vanilla ones. And you could, of course, also take a look at GitHub repositories of other mods and see how they generate their custom trunk placers. Now, in our case, the first thing we want to do is we want to call the set to dirt method, passing in the world, passing in the replacer, passing in random, then passing in sort position dot down and then the config. This is going to make it so that the block beneath the sapling that you set down is going to be set to dirt or whatever dirt provider you added in your custom tree configuration. Then we're going to make a custom height here. In this case, I'm going to call this the height underscore. And this is going to be the actual height that we get here from the parameter plus random dot next between. And we're going to pass in the first random height and then first random height plus, let's say, I don't know, something like two or something like that. And then another random dot next between and then we're going to do a second random height minus one and maybe the other one is second random height plus one and there you go now we're going to have a crazy you know custom height over here and that's going to be random and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to make a for loop over here so the i is going to be representing the height of our actual tree so this is i smaller than the height underscore and then we're going to increase this with the for loop and inside of it we're going to be setting down the custom log now how do we set it down well, you call the get and set state method, passing in the world, the replacer, random. Then we're going to pass in the position at which we're going to place this. We're going to be start position dot up and then passing in I over here in this case. And the last parameter is the config over here. And you can see this would now just place down a straight trunk in this case of height over here, which of course is going to be a little bit randomized. And that is basically what this is going to do. That's actually also the first thing we're going to take a look at. But before we take a look at that, we have to take a look at this null over here, because here we want to return an immutable list dot of, and that is going to be of a new foliage placer tree node passing in start position dot up and then passing in height underscore after the first closing parenthesis zero and then a false and you can see no errors are present. Basically, this list right here is going to be the list of positions where you're going to be placing down the foliage, so the leaves basically, on your tree. So if you had a branching tree with multiple nodes where you want the foliage to be placed down, that is where you would just pass in multiple elements here in this list, like multiple tree nodes, and that would then work on its own, basically. Now, that's already pretty good, but the last step is to go to your mod configured features class and change the straight trunk placer to the chestnut trunk placer right here. The base height, first random and second random height should all be fine. And of course, what's also quite important is you want to run the data gen again, because in this case, it has to rerun the data gen so that it generates a different configured feature right here for, with the chestnut trunk placer instead of the straight trunk placer. But you only need to do this once. And once you've done it once, then you can change the generate method here as often as you want and just go back into the game and start it from there. So in this case, let's jump into the client over here and take a look at the custom tree that this is going to generate. All right, fans, back in Minecraft and let's just take a look and you will see this is very much a taller tree than you might expect, because in this case, right, we have a quite a random height over there. And also the height is like quite significant, right? And here you can see is a little bit of a, a different height here in this case. So that is definitely the custom trunk placer, but that is not going to be everything that we're going to do. What we're going to do now is basically set down a couple of random logs over here, right, as branches in this direction and they're going to be well basically placed randomly so the idea is that some of some of the time you're gonna have you know branches like this and that is the general idea of what we're gonna place down and then from there hopefully you'll be able to create the custom tree of your dreams so let's take a look now to do this what i'm going to do in the for loop right here is i'm going to say hey if i divided by two is equal to zero and and the random dot next boolean is true, then we're going to be, well, basically going in here and taking a look at whether or not we're going to be placing something down. And we're going to have another random over here, let's say a next float that is bigger than 0.25. So that's a 75% chance of placing down 
a couple of new, basically a branch in this case. So that will be int x1 to x smaller or equal to 4 x plus plus and there you go now to set down the branches with a different block state you actually want to call replacer.accept and then passing in it's going to be quite a journey start position dot up i because that's going to be the position that we're actually taking a look at here in this case dot offset because we want to offset this to the direction dot north by x here in this case after the first closing parentheses then want to call function dot identity dot apply passing in config dot trunk provider very important we choose the correct one this is not the trunk placer but the trunk provider dot get passing in a random and then the position again start pass dot up i dot offset direction dot north comma x after the second closing parentheses with pillar block dot axis and then direction axis of z or z and then the entire function over here, you just want to cast this to a block state. And there you go. That should basically place down the blocks in the particular block state of, z of the z-axis. And it's going to be placing them down in the north direction. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this three more times. So we're going to have all directions in the southern direction over here. We can basically just change the direction and that's going to be fine. However, as soon as we're going into the east over here, we then want to change the axis to the x-axis because, of course, in that case, you have to rotate the block around a little bit. So this is going to be west then, and this is the similar thing, right? Instead of the z-axis, you want the x-axis. So here you also have an example of how you can specifically place down a, a log with a specific direction axis. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, there you go. You don't have to do this with for loops. You could also do it, you know, line by line, basically just taking this line, changing the position very, very straightforwardly and like specifically. But in this case, that's going to be fine for an example here in this case. And with that done, let's jump into the game again and take a look at what this craziness is going to generate. All right, fans, us back in Minecraft and let's just take a look over here and build this. And you can see, there you go. You got a couple of branches right here. Let's make another one just to see that there is quite a bit of randomness in this. So you can see sometimes they also spawn at the very bottom because that would be a zero, right? So this would be an I of zero, which is also divisible by two. Therefore, in this case, it can spawn there as well. And you can see, there you go. So the general idea is if we were to take a look at the direction over here, this is west, this is south. So in this is the northern direction. And you can see basically the idea is that it goes from one to four, right? So it basically sets it down. This would be zero right here. So this sets it down a normal one. And as soon as everything is true in the if statements, it sets down this one and then this one and then this one and then this one. And there you go. And all of a sudden we have this because it is a 75% chance of one of these sites spawning. You know, usually if one of them spawns, most of the time, almost all of them spawn. It's very often that all of them spawn or at least three of them at the same time. But yeah, there you go. That is going to be branches. Now, one different way that you could do the custom trees is as follows. You could go down here and you could say, well, wait a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that, let's say this is my custom block. That's my dirt block. And then here is my sapling, right? So this would be start position. This is the actual like start position right here, right? Start pass. That's this position right here. And then you can set it down, right? So you can then say start position up zero and then start position up one, start position up two, up three, up four, up five, right? And then you can say, well, start position up five and then say offset direction north one, two, three, bam. And then you can just continue with it, right? This is this is start position up five, offset north one, two, three, dot offset or dot up one, two, whatever you want. And the, just like this, you could also build a tree inside of Minecraft. You just have to figure out and basically sort of note down what, where the actual positions are that you want to set it down. And you can build like one, two, eight, 15, 26 of these different trees, put them all into different methods inside of your custom trunk placer, and then just choose one of those by random. That would also work and that would be one way that you could also do custom trees without resorting to making a custom structure. Because while that also works, I really don't like that personally. So that would be another way that you could do this, for example. But this is an example of custom trunk placers added to Minecraft. As always, I cannot recommend enough you try out and just go crazy with the generate method over here and just try out a bunch of different things and iterations and what you want to do and then hopefully you will be able to create the custom tree of your dreams. Helping with the custom tree of your dreams is going to be this video where we'll also add a custom foliage placer 
hope to see you there. So, yeah.